Hey everybody, it's Sugar Bar Philosopher. Welcome back out to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a comparison of clear ballistic gelatin versus organic gelatin for ballistic testing with the 380 ACP and the Bodyguard 2.0. Should be a good time. Let's get to shooting. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, so if you've been following the channel, I've done a whole series. We're up to about, I think, 23 videos on 380 ACP, where we are testing it into clear ballistic gelatin. Many comments that I get is, I, your testing is trash. You know, you don't have real comparisons. You can't use that clear ballistic gel. That's no, that's no good. Why are you doing that? You're just putting out false information on the internet. I've had all sorts of accusations over, over time. So, what I've decided to do is let's put it to the test. Now, I've seen other channels test clear ballistic gel and organic gelatin, but I think with each round, there's a different relationship that's going on. So I'm going to test two of my favorite, which is the Hydroshock Deep and the Underwood XTP. We're going to compare those two rounds, both into organic gelatin and then both into clear ballistic gelatin. And we're going to see if there's a difference and if it's enough of a difference to make a difference. My suspicion and hypothesis is that there may be a little bit difference and that the old adage that clear ballistic gel, the bullet travels just a little bit further and doesn't get quite as much expansion will probably be true when we test it out with the organic gelatin. That's the hypothesis. Also note, I know a little bit going into this a little bit in advance because I've already shot the videos. But one thing I want to tell you is that I failed on my first attempt. Now I'm going to show that anyways, because I think it's interesting in the results that we get from it. What do I mean by failed? Well, I made some organic gelatin, followed the recipe to the best of my abilities, got out to the range, did a calibration test, which is shooting a steel BB going 590 feet per second, and it should get somewhere in the range of a little bit over three inches of penetration. And what I got was about seven or eight inches of penetration. So that's clearly it's not passing a calibration test. So that was a failure. Then we shot our clear ballistic gel. And then I went home, figured out what I did wrong. By the way, if you're ever wondering, it's supposed to be 10% by weight. I was doing it by 10% by volume, which was kind of a, a duh moment for me. And uh, so I've redone the ballistic gelatin and uh, I was able to get it calibrated, I think pretty close to what it is uh, supposed to be. And we're going to run these tests. I found it informative. I found it useful. Hopefully this can be used as a reference video. Now that I've started making some organic gelatin, I may do that as I go into other calibers other than 380, just to get a baseline of, hey, we'll do most of our testing is in clear ballistic, but let's get a baseline in organic gelatin to make sure that there's nothing too crazy in our differences between these two. Okay, with that said, should be a good time. Let's get to shooting. Okay, I just want to show something. This is with the clear ballistic gel. What I was getting with that organic gelatin, so BBs were going out seven to eight inches when they were going about 590 feet per second. This one is almost tech spec, especially if you consider the bounce back. It's a little over three inches, three and a quarter, then bounces back to just under three inches. I'm not sure if you can see that BB, but that's what it's supposed to do. Like, I think that clear ballistic, there's a lot of papers and a lot of studies done 10 plus years ago on clear ballistic gel. I think it's doing a lot better nowadays. Federal Hydroshock Deep 99 grain into not well calibrated organic gelatin. Well, this is our organic gelatin. This is the Hydrostock Shock Deep. I do like how the organic gelatin tends to show the wound track just a little bit better than the clear ballistic gel. Again, we're not calibrated, but ironically, this is the same result we got with the clear ballistic test. In just plain gelatin, when I first did it, it would bounce off entering into the second block. So far, uh, pretty good. You could say 16 inches of penetration when it hit this block and then bounce back to about 14 and a half inches. Okay, well, this time we have that Underwood XTP. It's not their plus P, it's just their regular variety. Let's see if we can get this into the gel, see if we can capture the shot as we shoot it as well. Okay. 
Okay, let's just take a quick look at this. We're really looking at this bottom here. And yet again, we seem to be getting very similar results to what we've been getting with our air ballistic tests. Uh, very nice wound track, very nice expansion out to about just, you know, 15 and a half uh, inch mark. This time, it, this bullet did not bounce out. It stayed in here. It did not bounce against the second gel block. But uh, let me just give you just a slightly different view. You can see that, but this is one that I, I missed. That was a, a miss there. This one here is the was the first round really kind of hit into the gel, and that was that Federal Hydroshock Deep. This is the one that I put too close to the Hydroshock Deep, and it went very similar. Again, it pretty much, maybe it went a little bit further in the second shot, you know, maybe it was a little faster or whatnot, but again, I'm seeing very similar results out of these two rounds. Definitely one is putting more energy, but I'm not seeing a whole lot difference in the wound track between them. They, they look overall to be very, very similar wound tracks. Put this one up top. Yeah, I mean, we've got, it's getting out to, I don't know. The width of that is maybe one and a half inches, two inches of the disruption in the organic gelatin, which I do like how it shows up, the disruption shows up far better in the organic gelatin. Looks like we had some splintering of that bullet or lost fragments as it went around. That's also very good for doing damage, so that's good. Okay, we have the clear ballistic gel, 99 grain Federal Hydroshock Deep. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, 908 this time. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Like we got basically the same. I mean, this bullet didn't bounce back as much as that clear ballista or that 10% ordnance gel, which maybe I screwed up somehow, who knows. But uh, yeah, it's going, going in here. And notice, yeah, you just don't see as much disruption in this clear ballistic gel. And again, this one is calibrated appropriately. And okay, well this time we have that Underwood XTP bullet into the clear ballistic gel. See how it performs. 10.55. We got out to, yeah, right around 12 inches. Total about 13 and a half, 14 inches. That's just a little bit less than what it got in that other organic gelatin. I would just say that like, you know, amongst friends here, there, is it enough of a difference to make a difference? I don't, I'm not really seeing anything. Now again, I'll go back to it. The, the organic gelatin isn't calibrated properly. So we have to kind of assess that that gel isn't right. But is it that much further off by this? It would slow things down more. So, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, just want to take a quick look at our clear ballistic gel. This is 10% ordnance gel. And I want to show that I have calibrated it. It's calibration. Come on. Is out to a little under three and a half inches. You can see the BB is the BB is right there. So a little under three and a half inches for our calibration. So I'm calling that good on this one now. And let's get ready to go. Okay, well, we're back out at the range. We have a new gel and I kind of think I figured out what I did wrong. I was doing 10% by volume, not 10% by weight, which is really two different things when you're dealing with this gelatin grade 250A or A250. So we now have it right. Just showed the clip of it being calibrated. We're going to shoot the 99 grain federal HST into this clear, quasi clear, but 10% ordnance uh, gel block of organic gelatin. We'll see how the bullet performs so we can compare it. 805 on that one. Again, that's the Federal Hydroshock Deep. Okay, 
let's take a quick look at it. Sure enough, we're getting some confirmation that with this one example, again, we don't have a large sample size, but with this one example, we're getting a little bit less penetration. The other one's got 15 and a half, 16 inches. This one is getting right to 14 inch mark, right on the dot, and has very nice expansion, very nice wound track. We'll try to get a top view of that. Okay, the glare and sun isn't really helping with it, but came in here, very nice permanent wound track, expansion, that kind of more disruptive expansion finished out at about the eight inches and then continues on to again, the 14 inch mark. Okay, now we have the 90 grain XTP from Underwood. We'll see how it performs in the clear ballistic, not clear ballistic, but the 10% ordnance. I already tell that one right next to another one. I'm gonna shoot another one, 1052. Okay, I got one more of the Underwood XTP. We're gonna to try to get it just outside of that wound track. All right, that's lower, 977, so a little bit slower than the previous one. I would expect maybe a little bit deeper penetration. We'll see though. Okay, we got a little bit down deeper, and if I'm not mistaken, it did just a little bit more damage, it feels like, in those first five inches. Then again, at about eight inches, the damage kind of stops and finishes out a little over 12 inches, about 13. So just the variation in the two rounds in the velocity of them cause it probably to expand just a little bit less and get a little bit deeper penetration. Okay, well, let's just take a look at these projectiles. Now, unfortunately, I did lose one of the Hydroshock deeps, and unfortunately, it was on the gel, but you can go back to previous videos that I have, and we can take a look at, at, at how it performs in the gel. Also, Hydroshock deep is the least interesting from this perspective because it really will expand the same. As you can see, what we have laid out here is this is the uncalibrated gel, meaning it was done wrong. It's probably less than 10%. Here we have the 10% ballistic gel, and then this is the result with the, with, with the clear ballistics. And as you can see, they look pretty similar. Now this uncalibrated gel, if we take a look over here with, the X, with these XTP bullets, it definitely got the widest with one of those going out to 5.4, definitely smushed more. And again, I remember I had to shoot multiple in there because I kept kind of, you know, going too low and going right with the other stuff and wanted to really get it separate. So again, the one of them, and I think this is the one that kind of skipped and missed. So the XTP, this is the uncalibrated got the most, and that might indicate, yeah, that's more like just water type shot. Um, and here we go. So we have if this one, uh, the, with the Hydroshock Deep, it got 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5414, something like that. Then this is with the calibrated clear ballistic gel and very similar, not much difference, maybe not quite as much expansion, but, but, but as you can see, like 0 0.510, I think is the, is the, yeah, 0 0.513. It's basically the same. Um, as, as, as the other one. And again, taking a look at, it's more of the, of the calibrated XTP, maybe not as wide as the other one, but again, we're out at basically point, we're about at basically at 0.5. Um, one of them again, did a little bit less and down at about 0 0.45, 0 0.44. And then this was the clear ballistic shot, just clear ballistic. And again, 0 0.45, 0 0.5. You know, there's enough variability with these bullets that you wouldn't, going back and looking at them, you wouldn't be able to tell one from the other. Oh yeah, that was clear ballistic. Oh yeah, that was organic gelatin. So hopefully that is useful. Okay, well, let's wrap things up. I mean, I think that we saw some pretty good information here. I think between the three different types of gel, the uncalibrated, probably shouldn't use, the clear ballistics, and the calibrated organic, 10% organic gelatin, we saw 
actually in terms of bullet expansion, not a whole hill of beans of difference. Maybe a little bit more in that uncalibrated gelatin than in the clear ballistic and the calibrated properly gelatin. Maybe a little bit more expansion happening there. Also, we saw a little bit of less penetration in the organic gelatin than we did see in the clear ballistic gelatin. That's consistent with other people. Now, these are two bullet types where you can say, like the Hydroshock Deep, it doesn't expand that much. It's not supposed to expand that much so that it gets enough penetration. The XTP bullet is designed in the 380 to not expand that much. So I think that we're getting about what you, you should for these results. Does that mean that these results correspond to, take for example, the Winchester silver tip or some of the other elite defender bullets that expand instead of 0.4 or 0.5, they get out to 0.7. I think that's probably worth another test to see how those bullets expand in organic gelatin versus clear ballistic gelatin. Um, I found this information, this uh, useful to me for my further test, and I'm going to be referencing it in future videos. Let me know what you guys think about the comparison below. Are there other comparisons that you would like to see? Please put it in the comments below. Hope everyone has a great week, and let's get to shooting. From pistols to rifles, we'll take on the best. Reviewing each weapon, put them to the test. With revolvers and shotguns.